And then horrible things happen, and of course he has to, um, you know, things things get a little bit sour again. But um, we are, it's a big theme of our season is identity, and, and Oliver being comfortable with the person that he is. Okay. Will uh, his relationship with Roy kind of help him be a little bit more goofy? That has been my favorite part of season three so far. Yeah. The relationship between Colton's character and my character, um, we are in a really good spot. We're in, a, we're in a, a big brother, little brother spot. And we have been trying to find, you know, little moments where I do everything short of like giving him a noogie. <laughs> you know? So, uh, so that, that's been cool. But the, the, the Oliver Roy relationship um, is, is, uh, is, 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 has really evolved. Uh, hi, Steven. Hey. Um, so my question for you is, uh, I have a sibling, uh, I'm sorry, I have a younger sibling who wasn't able to make it here today to see you, and he's a huge fan, and um, his birthday is coming up in a few weeks. Cool. I was wondering if I could get a short video recording of you just saying happy birthday to him. Is your, is your, Adam. His name's Adam? Yeah. Is your camera ready? <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you ready? <laughs> Adam, what birthday is it for him? It's his 22nd. Okay, so I'm gonna say happy birthday, and then when she points the camera towards you guys, everyone say happy birthday, okay? Adam, happy 22nd birthday, right, friends? Happy birthday! <laughs> oh boy, it's all downhill from here, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, happy birthday to you, absolutely. And uh, you know, on the on the on the video game front, um, you know, I got to voice Green Arrow in Injustice Gods Among Us. Um, I got. Uh, by the way, I'm sure that I mean I'm sure that it was done, but did Green Arrow really have to be lying on the ground between Superman and Batman in the cover? Yeah. <laughs> People ask me to sign it all the time. I'm like, Come on, <laughs> Uh, that was really cool. Um, I uh, voiced uh, Green Arrow in another video game that's coming up, which is pretty cool. But we don't have our own um, we don't have our own uh, video game yet, and I I think it would be great. I get asked the question enough, but I, I feel like it would be I feel like it would be popular. So you know, hopefully now uh, with the Flash, and hopefully it does really well, and you know, we, we can we can build you know the Arkham style game for. For all of our queen, you guys would like it, right? Yeah. I'm on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Make it happen. Okay, back on to left. Hi, uh, I'm a huge fan, and my question is, why do you choose to manage your own social media and not get someone else to do it? Question. That's good. You know, that is a good question, and um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't set out to. I didn't set out to um, to do it this way, but you know I, I feel like um, if there is not an authenticity to social media these days, because you're doing things that other people do. I'm not. I, I happen to have a Facebook page. Anybody can have a, a Facebook page. Um, anyone can have an outlet. Anyone can have a YouTube channel. Anyone can have a Twitter account. So if you're not being authentic, if you're not representing you, people can tell. And, you know, um, uh, I, I never made the decision. It's just something, it's just something that, that I enjoyed. And then the major catalyst was I was reading uh, an article on George Clooney in Esquire magazine over Christmas break. And it was all about how George Clooney basically said, if you're a celebrity, and you have Twitter, you're an idiot. And, and you know, he is defined by being uh, unreachable. So I thought, okay, that's one end of the spectrum. What if I try the other? What if I try to be reachable? What if I talk directly back and with people? Um, what if I ask people questions? 
and I feel like we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, this, I made this decision when I had, you know, just a little less than 500,000 friends on Facebook, and that was, you know, eight months ago, and now we have two and a half million. So hopefully it keeps growing like that, because I feel like, you know, I, I feel like our ability to influence, I mean, there, there are things that have happened on the show because of the fan base. And I know what those things are because people are able to get in touch with me. So I think that it's the model for any public person in 2014. spot here, but do you mind doing the arrow intro for everybody here? They love when you do this! Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Um, oh yeah, except I always get mixed up between... Oh, I'm not taking this shit. Off. One time. Because I was guilted into it by a kid in front of like 7,000 people, okay? So if you want to see me take my shirt off on a, on a panel, uh, uh, access YouTube. There you go. Uh, Y'all do it for me, man. Uh, <laughs> my name is Oliver Queen. For five years, I've been stranded on an island with only one goal, survive. Now I'm returning. This is where I always get messed up. <laughs> I can't be the man that I once was. To honor my friend's memory, I must be someone else. I must be something else. Previously, on your own. watching the show that Oliver eventually ends up back on the island, yeah. but the, our third season is, is very much the Hong Kong chapter of the show. And it's, and it's, it's really cool. Um, it, it, adds a, it adds a different element to the show. Um, you know, um, it, it makes my life a little bit easier because we don't actually have to film the island sequences. Um, <laughs> it's bad, but it's not as bad. Um, and um, it's still pretty bad. And, uh, uh, and and I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. We've shot uh, five. Ep we've shot five episodes now, but of those five episodes, only three episodes are my flashbacks, which is another wrinkle for the show this year. I mean, last year we had um, we had a Diggle centric episode, The Suicide Squad, and, and we got to see you know we got to see Diggle's backstory, and that's I think when people realize that. It doesn't always have to be Oliver's flashback. So, as a result, when we do do a flashback story, it's no longer filler. It's all, it's all really important, crucial stuff. First off, I just want to say it's uh, racial goal, not browser goal. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I know. I know. <laughs> um, Nissa calls her father Raish, but. Uh, Unfortunately, I wasn't around when it was established, and uh, it, uh, it's Roz. Well, when he shows up. <laughs> unless, unless he shows up, and I'm like, hey, Roz, and he goes, Trish! <laughs> and my question is, uh, what is Errol's martial art, and do you train yourself? Um, so, so, you know, and what, that's actually, you know, I'm, Oliver is learning a particular type of martial art this year, and uh, and also, one of the cool things that we're gonna do this year is we have never in the present day seen Oliver learn anything new. Except for maybe how to smile more. <laughs> and and uh, in terms of combat, Oliver is gonna learn something new this year, which I'm excited about. And uh, and for me, I've done some jujitsu, but you know, in general, it's it's just if 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 fighting on screen was a martial art, and I feel like it is, because there is a technique to it. That would be what I train in. You know, how do you throw a punch 
that doesn't actually hit someone in the face, but it looks like it hits someone in the face. That's what I train in. Thanks, man. Uh, other than Slade and Murrow, what, what was the your most favorite villain to face? Slade and Merlin and the Count. Yeah, I loved, uh, I loved Seth Abel. And I, you know, I told that story, I don't talk about people in the past tense. I love Seth Abel. Um, and, uh, and he's got his, he's got his show Salem now, which is really cool. And uh, gets to grow an awesome beard, which is even better. And I told that story earlier about focus pullers. The Count was this crazy guy. And so the focus puller would try to focus, but every once in a while, randomly, Seth would just go, like that, and that pulls you out of focus. So I would actually walk up to our focus puller on A camera, uh, either Sean or Paul, and I'd be like, hey man, I just uh, read the script. And he'd be like, oh yeah? And I'd go, he was coming back. She's <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> 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 story. Now we're actually going to see a new uh, uh, Vertigo, right? In yeah. season three. Yeah. Is that Peter Stormare? Yes, it is. Peter Stormare is playing, uh, he's playing Count Vertigo. That's cool. It's really cool. I, I, I don't know, but I've just always that scene in that movie where they're chopping up a body. I'm, just, I'm always just terrified by him. Well, he's a terrifying man. Yeah. I can speak from first-hand experience. Yeah. One of the cool things, though, is I found out when he came on that he's a big fan of the show. Oh, yeah. You know, actors that I'm fans of that are big fans of the show, yeah. I'm always like, that's just really cool, yeah. man. It's, it's just, you know, I, I, I become a fan right then. Hi, Stephen. Um, my question is, now that we're going into season three, I'm wondering, um, is there anything you'd like to see Oliver do that he hasn't done before? Anything that I'd like to see Oliver do that he hasn't done before? Oh, really? Oh, it's Ashley. I lied. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, you had a lot of uh, emotional scenes in this season with uh, Laurel in episode 14. You had another one with uh, Sarah. Um, you were pop like, breaking up with her in episode 16. In episode 17, you have an uh, uh, emotional uh, moment with the uh, trying to keep, well, secrets keeping. Yeah. Um, in episode 18. <laughs> I'm like walking all out. The, the point is that Oliver goes on a, on a profound emotional yeah, journey. Yeah, like it's one character each in, like, in every episode. So I'm wondering which was the hardest one to film for you as an actor than you as a character? The hardest scene for me to film in season two was the scene uh, where we flash back to, to two years prior to even getting on the Queen's Gambit. And uh, Oliver has just learned that uh, his uh, one night stand has. Uh, Lost the baby, even though she definitely didn't. Um, and, uh, and and shooting that scene, that was my last scene with Susanna Thompson. Both, you know, in terms of storyline and in actuality on, on on the on the show. And and I get really emotional in that scene. And it wasn't originally scripted. And it was incredibly difficult. That was a that was a very true moment that that Sean threw that that thankfully played on the show. Yeah, man. Thank you. You guys had such awesome questions. Hey, thanks. We ran out of time, but what else would you like to say to your fans before you go? Uh, this, you know what? This is uh, this is always going to be home for me. So, uh, you know, being here, some of the people that I've seen. Is Troy here? Send him 
this guy from? It didn't matter. The point is, is that I've now got to see people for a couple of years and uh, always home for me. I love you guys. Thank you so much, everybody.